Bureau Borsch believes that design is a source of learning, understanding, and joy. And this comes through in their work, which is always content driven and always a pleasure to simply look at. Their output seems to float effortlessly between contradictory worlds. The gridded rigidness of newspaper design, the populist landscape of corporate clients, the avant-garde experimentalism of the art world, and the luxurious conceptualism of fashion. In all of these spheres, Borsch's typography and art direction shines through, always fresh and always relevant. Whether they're channeling classic German typography or diving deep into the deranged aesthetics of teen magazines, which are you showing that tonight? Maybe. Okay, you can throw it in. <laughs> Mirko earned an MA in graphic design from Kingston University and received a degree in communication design from University of Applied Sciences, Augsburg. Before starting his studio, he worked as an art director for ad advertising firms, record labels, and magazines. He has been faculty at the Bauhaus University in Weimar and the Münster University of Applied Science Sciences. He has served on numerous international juries and his studio's work has won numerous international design awards. In 2006, he won the German Design Award which is the highest design award in Germany. And in 2007, he was named the Visual Leader of the Year. It's quite an honor to have him, so please welcome Mirko Borsche. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is uh, Mirko Borsche. I think most of you might not know me, so... Uh, introduce myself with my first name first, because every time I go here somewhere in America or somewhere outside of Germany, I have to say something about my name. I had it beforehand with you. Every time I say, what's your name? And I go like, Mirko, say, again, say it again, say it again. And so after a few times, people figure it's a miracle. <laughs> and uh, so I was thinking like, okay, keep it like that. It's not the worst thing, not the worst option. <laughs> and then what's your surname? My surname is Borsch, Borsche how you say it in Germany, and then uh, they say like, what again, say it again, it's like, yeah, you know, it's like the sports car with a B. Um, so when you come home tonight and somebody's asking you what lecture you've been in, it's Miracle Porsche. Um, yeah, and then they always ask me what I'm doing, and I said, I'm, I'm a graphic designer, and you know, uh, being a graphic designer, it's not that easy, because normally you tend to say, you know, it's that boring job, but people have that kind of, idea what a uh, graphic designer is, so uh, maybe the idea is this. Venice, I'm a graphic designer. I'm like a graphic designer? Oh, FYI, I'm a graphic designer. He's like this nerdy graphic design type, but with a total stud body. I'm a graphic designer. Graphic design? I love that stuff. <laughs> well, actually, we're more of a graphics design company. We do menus and logos and things like that, so... I think being a graphic designer helps me to be more creative. It sounds like a really cool, rewarding job. I'm a graphic designer. I'm a really good graphic designer. My aunt was a fantastic photographer. I'm creative. I make a living. You make, you're a graphic designer, man. You make pamphlets, <laughs> DJ flyers. You're a fucking sellout. I bet you're always looking for hot new graphic designers. Sure. Logos, stationery, soap. Graphic design. I do um, letterheads and logo types. I'm pretty handy with Photoshop because I was a graphic design major. I know you're into graphic design. Do you want to give it a shot? Maybe try and design the logo? Uh, totally. I hear that you are quite a graphic designer. So is anyone with a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I'd figured that out before I racked up $60,000 in student loans. She's a designer. Graphic design. That's still a designer. Uh, I almost went into graphic design. I loved to draw. I had my markers. You were a playwright, something, and then a, a graphic the stuff. Would... Graphic designer. I just want something a little more edgier. Okay, what did you have in mind exactly? I was thinking more like graphic designer. Mid-30s, you know, with a cool Asian girlfriend who, like, dresses awesome and rocks out on the bass guitar. So what's he like? Graphic designer? Oh. Please. Hello, can I redesign your logo? Yes, that'll be a hundred thousand pounds for a squiggle. Wish I was a graphic designer. Yeah, so uh, basically that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so the bureau is called Bureau Bosch where I'm working. That's, uh, I'm not going to explain that now because this is going to take too long, I think. Uh, I'm based in Munich, which is a very small city uh, in Germany, 
most of my clients, they are abroad, so everybody thinks I'm in Berlin. Every time somebody's in Berlin, he always comes to me and says, I'm right in Berlin, I want to pop over in the office. And I said, yeah, take a train. It takes you like six, six seven hours, and then you're going to be there. <laughs> so we're not in Berlin. We're in that uh, small city. But we have one client in Berlin, so I'm, uh, I'm working for Die Zeit, which is a very big weekly newspaper in Germany. And I'm being creative director now for 11 years for that newspaper, but I also do the supplement for that newspaper. And um, what's very special about that is this is one of the only newspapers in Germany, or a weekly, which increases their sales for the last 10 years. And uh, that's special, and I think it's because of Giovanni Di Lorenzo, the chief editor of uh, the whole newspaper and the magazine, and Christoph Armand, who is the chief editor of the Zeit magazine, who really trusts me because I'm a, I think I'm one of the only art directors or creative directors in the world, which is 800 kilometers far away from both of these newspapers or magazines. So we have a telephone call every week, twice, two hours, about the art direction, about the typography and everything. And another thing what we're doing, I don't believe really in um, doing redesigns, so we do a rebrush. We do a rebrush almost every year on the newspaper and all, like on the website and everything. So we try to keep it fresh all the time before it gets old. And uh, what's very special about the magazine is we have a double cover. So you always have a first page, the first cover, and a second cover. Just explaining that, this is one of the cover. The headline says, uh, we did everything wrong again. The second one says, no problem. <laughs> or before and after. <laughs> when they told me they had, they're like, it was Giovanni's idea having like these two covers on the magazine. When he told me the only thing I have to keep on that magazine is like this double cover idea, I thought it's one of the stupidest ideas you can have. <laughs> Because, you know, having one good idea for one cover is already, that's a thing. Like a weekly, doing a weekly magazine and having one idea for a cover, but then having two ideas, that was really challenging. But hopefully I could do it after a while. So this is uh, after the assassination in Paris. This is one of the tickets in the Bataclan where the shooting was inside of... Uh, what was the band again playing? So now I need somebody. It's maybe Eagles of the Death Metal. I just have to read it. <laughs> Easy. I'm a graphic designer. <laughs> Stunning body. Can read. Um, yeah. So that was the one year anniversary for that. So we met everybody who kept that ticket um, with the magazine. It was important for us because for them, it was a really, really horror day, and uh, it was interesting that there have been quite a lot of people which normally you have, like, you, take, uh, you keep souvenirs from something nice. They kept that as a souvenir from something really horrible. Sometimes we change that idea where the logo is as well, because I have that idea of it's a supplement, so it's somehow already wrapped inside of the uh, newspaper, so you don't have to find it on newsstand. This is a special design issue for, issue for sleeping. That was the second cover. Or sometimes we do, you know, Mad, of course, from the 80s and the 70s. I was a big fan when I was a kid, and I always wanted to do that, but it's really complicated to get all these illustrations together to find something which works. I did it more simple, so it worked like that. It's about saying hello in different countries and uh, different cultures. Summer issues. And uh, what's special as well, we're doing a lot of art direction and uh, it's always special working with photographers. <laughs> so we have all different kind of photographers we were working with. Um, some of them do reportage, very classic, Just go through that because classic. Or like um, like Pilligan, he's a uh, Magnum photographer, 
who is doing a lot of uh, black and white photography for us as well, because I think this is a genre which you don't see that much anymore in like big newspapers or magazines. Like everything is very shiny, very colorful. And I, I think still like this idea of having like no color inside and just the language of black and white is super strong. This is just my daughter. She's maybe annoyed that I'm talking, sorry. <laughs> uh, a lot of fashion is in there as well. So it's between fashion, culture, music, politics. Now oh, they're leaving. <laughs> this is the fashion case. And which also gives us the chance, because it's a weekly magazine, we're working a lot with very well-known photographers all the time, all over the world. But we also have a lot of newcomers in there, like a lot of fresh young talents, which we mix in every issue. Mm. Illustration also is a very big part about it. So also doing there, a lot of art direction on that. We have the problem with the um, Zeit magazine. It doesn't really have a lot of cash. I mean, every magazine has to try to save some money in the moment because it's not, you know, it's not coming from everywhere, but still, like, uh, 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 the sales is increasing, but the advertising is going back everywhere. So, in that case, we always do, like, every year we do for the Salone in Milan, we do a special edition about design. And for us, it's very challenging because, you know, once we do fashion, it's no problem because Vuitton, Balenciaga, all these brands, they send the stuff to us, they pay for it, and you can send it back. But if you ask Vitra, Flos, all these brands to send a bed, two beds, or whatever in a studio, it's a very, for us it's like very hard to organize that, but it's also a waste of money because they have to send the whole bed over, we have to build it, we have to fix it in the studio, set the light and everything. So we decided a few years ago that we dis uh, just illustrate everything around design. To save some money, you still see uh, the pieces inside. In the end of every story, you have some uh, turn pages where you see the product itself, like some product pages just on white cutouts. But before we tried just to give a feeling how in, in which environment we see those kind of design pieces. Yeah, this is our readership because what, what is really special about the Zeit and the Zeit magazine is we also, there was this guy called Murdoch, you know him, maybe a lot of people know him. Uh, when I started at Zeit Magazine, one year before, he had uh, kind of lectured the Zeit, and he was talking to the chief editor, and he said, you know, that kind of newspaper, because it's huge, it's like when you unfold it in the, in the airplane, you annoy everyone in, the, in your row, because you go like that, everybody's reading your newspaper. And he said, like, this is going to stay for another five years, and then it's gone. And our readership was very old at that time. I mean, according to newspapers, it started at 40, 45 and went until 80. We increased that now uh, af uh, um, after the last 11 years. I think we are around 28 now, which is a lot. You know, we have a lot of young readers, but it's really because of we we we. Uh, we changed the Zeit magazine, we changed the whole tone. We have a really strong readership in women because before we had like 20% to 30% women reading the Zeit. Now we have almost 48% women reading the newspaper, which is good and which is important as well. And uh, yeah, maybe she's a little bit too young, but I'm going to get her there. <laughs> and then we have a different readership for another magazine called Kaleidoscope which is a magazine uh, based in Milan. So we just have a very few clients in Germany. There's no, actually, there's no real reason for me being in Munich, and there's no real reason for me being in Germany, except my kids and everything and my family, which is a really, really good reason staying there. And, uh, but most of our clients are in America, in Paris, or in Italy. And this is one of our Italian clients called Kaleidoscope. It's a, uh, I have to drink a little zip, wait. American style. Um, 
Yeah, this is in between fashion and uh, culture and, and arts, which is interesting because you have a lot of magazines in that in that field. But uh, Alessio, who is the chief editor of that magazine, has a different approach. We all almost make every issue a little bit different. So there's not a redesign, but there's a kind of change in the inner pages. So we have the beginning and the end of the magazine is always the same. The cover changes a bit, but the middle part about the artist always changes to the art. And there's a lot of design in there. And this is another cover. That's what you see. It's like the change between this cover already and also the logo sizes change in between, which is more challenging for uh, a magazine which is at the newsstand because normally if you would go to an editor and talk to him and say, like, I want to change the logo all the time, everybody has the fear of like, nobody finds it anymore. You won't recognize it anymore or whatever. And uh, in that case, it's different because um, these guys, maybe they're Italian and it makes a big difference, but they're quite cool about their magazine. They say it has a very strong, unique language and it's going to be found anytime. So this is just show some spreads. We also have an Asian issue twice a year, Chinese basically. And because of that, there's like a lot of artists we're working with and we're doing a lot of um, art catalogs as well. Normally they're very classic, you know, these art catalogs everybody's doing, like a lot of white space, Helvetica, left aligned. We do all that. <laughs> we're German, you know, it's like, <laughs> we're totally used to doing that. A lot of white space and left aligned and, you know. But this guy from New York, Cory Archangel, he came to me and he's like, he, he, uh, he's using to read the Kaleidoscope magazine. He said, you know, uh, we're having that exhibition in uh, Florence, in Italy. Can you do me an art catalog, which is a little bit different? So I talked to him for a very, very long time about the art catalog. And then after a while, we found out, both of us, that we really like teen magazines because of their ugliness. <laughs> and... Uh, and then I said, you know, like this little kid running around the park looking at flowers and liking them. I said, yeah, I can do that. No worries. It took me ages to get there. <laughs> White space, Helvetica left aligned, you know, done in a week or done in two days. This took me, it took me really days. Finding all these buttons in Illustrator, Photoshop, <laughs> InDesign, you know. And then placing all that stuff, and you always go like, oh, it's not ugly enough, it's not ugly enough. <laughs> now it's too ugly. But I really got into it. And uh, I really got into it because we have these openers in between. And I had to get, <laughs> tried to get some copy text, some serious one from curators, which are very famous. They had to find all their text like that. And, and that's the back side of the whole thing. <laughs> but it was a hassle. He was happy, that's the artist. And that's the email he wrote me, because then he found the way we did the design very challenging. And you see what he could do in Call Draw. <laughs> Actually, almost as good, maybe better than ours. Another client we have in Milan is called Slam Jam. Um, nobody will know it in here, but it's kind of, kind of the supreme in, in Europe. Kind of. It's still Europe. And it's not supreme. But <laughs> it's Slam Jam. The Italians, they spell it Slam a Jam. And um, it really is fun working with those guys because they're related to these uh, Calodos Cope guys. Now they have a really big, they have a 3,000 square meter big gallery space called Spazio Maiocchi, which we're all also doing together with them in Milan. And uh, it's crazy. I mean, you never saw a gallery space like that. It's like a museum. It's, it's a really massive space. And uh, they just have fun doing things. They sell clothes. The other one talk about art. And uh, Virgil, he's doing a lot for that. So we did some cooperations together with him and Heron Preston as well. Yeah, and that's, uh, we do a lot of retail. This is the boring part, the retail part. 
and also a lot of garments, printing on garments, stuff like that. And this is their corporate website. We are now sitting on their e-commerce website, which is going to look almost the same. And always, we're going to come to that subject later on, most important, mobile first, so the mobile website has to look super nice. Doesn't really, I mean, it's more trash, but I like it. So everybody knows this man, on, I think he was really looking forward to meeting me today and uh, talking about this. Uh, that's a really big subject uh, everywhere in the moment because it's around the press that all the logos of all heritage brands get so boring. Is it? It is. You were asking me about that. <laughs> the problem is I'm totally involved. I'm, into, I'm involved with, with that logo, and uh, a lot of people ask me why we changed that logo into the other logo. So I thought maybe I'd take one part of the whole lecture tonight and explain that part. Could be interesting. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, this is the old logo. This is kind of the heritage logo. This is the logo everybody knows from Remova. And uh, we were asked why we changed that very iconic logo from Remova. Remova is from 1889. It's a brand which is very, very old. That logo is from end of the 80s. It's not that old, actually. But everybody knows it because it's from that time when advertising was big, branding was big, and you were putting your logo on every single piece of things you could find. So the first thing we did, we were looking at the suitcases. We found on every suitcase around 35 to 48 logos. That's something. Sitting in the canteen, like the spoons had a logo, the underplate had a logo, the espresso cup had a logo, everything had a logo. So obviously everybody knows that logo now and it's that kind of branding idea which we had in the 80s. It's a very marketing based idea. The idea we had is different because we always tried to research everything. So we went back historically and tried to find out where Himova came from. Remova is a word mix, came from Europa. Uh, it's a word mix between three names, which I'm not going to tell you now because you won't remember and we won't, don't going to start at Miracle Porsche again. <laughs> but trust me, it's three names. So, as you see in here, the first logos have been sans serif. So it's not that big change, actually, we made. And then the other ones you see on the right-hand side, already are very simple. So when Remova was bought by Elve Marsh two, day, two years ago, and Alexandra Arnaud was asking us um, to uh, redesign the whole brand, it's a thing, if you, have a brand, uh, if you have a company that big size as Elve Marsh or Caring, they're very concerned that when they buy a brand, it really has to fit in the portfolio. So they change a lot on the brand. It is that way. It's not my decision, but it's that way. So my decision at that point as a designer can be, I have to find for myself a reason and an idea what I'm going to change and why I'm going to change it. So talking about 1889, and uh, 98, sorry, 1898. At that year, the accidents grotesque was shown the first time in Berlin which is interesting because that typeface was mostly hated at that time because everything, everybody saw, uh, thought a serif typeface is much more beautiful and this is really ugly. Remover at that time had one of the first suitcases which you could carry around and you didn't have like a whole wardrobe with you because traveling beforehand, you had somebody who was carrying your wardrobe like that and there were all your clothes hanging inside. You didn't really pack stuff. It was, it was really a modern idea. So we thought maybe we combine both of these ideas. It's the same time, it's the same year, it's a very radical idea. It's both German-based, and that's how we came up. It's not the original uh, Accidentsgrotesque, it's a little bit slimmer. This cut doesn't exist, so we redrew it, but it is that way. And this is how you see it now in the shops. Now I just show some collaterals because obviously we needed a monogram because it's part of the LV Marsh Group. Everything in the LV Marsh Group, you know Louis Vuitton, everything needs a monogram. Working on that. 
Yeah, and another point which we can discuss is Balenciaga, because it was always on this, this list as well. It's also our fault that this uh, very old logo on the left-hand side, uh, we decided against it. This logo is uh, five years old. The old logo is from Alexander Wang. Actually, it's not from Alexander Wang, but it's from the time of Alexander Wang. And he did a redesign at that time on the Balenciaga logo. Same as he is. Like, these brands have so much money, they're pushing the brand so much through that everybody has this idea of, and it's different to Burberry's and Berluti and Balmain and Yves Saint Laurent, obviously. But I can talk a lot about Saint Laurent because that Saint Laurent logo existed already from the beginning of Saint Laurent on the right hand side because it used to be the couture logo of Saint Laurent. It is that way, it looks super modern, but it's like 60 years ago. So with the Balenciaga logo, same. Demna asked us at that time, he's the uh, uh, chief designer of Balenciaga, he asked us to redesign the logo of Balenciaga. We already did some other projects together with him, so I knew which direction he wants to go. He wants to go a little bit more bold, he wants to work with the logo because he's working with the logo a lot. And we needed to have a reason what typeface and which typeface we are going to use. A lot of people thought we are using the Univer completely wrong. Uh, this is the old logo, actually, before Alexander Wang. I'm already going too deep inside before I'm showing something. But now I'm there. It's not, because it's, uh, it's kind of uh, the Univer, but it's a uh, different Univer. It's from Frutiger as well. Adrian Frutiger drew it. He just drew it for the Metro in Paris. There are like maybe three or four uh, metro stations still using that existing typeface in Paris. One of them is directly in front of the carrying group where Balenciaga is based. We thought that's very interesting because the creative part of Balenciaga is based in Swiss, in Switzerland. Sorry, Switzerland. is based there. So we thought this is nice because you have like a Swiss type designer doing something for a French metro system and we have the same for Balenciaga mirroring back. That's how we came up asking the Ecal in Lausanne because they had the original drawings of the typeface because it hasn't been digitalized beforehand. As for the typeface, that's how we tried to reconstruct all the drawings, then started digitalizing it for all the different needs, because it needs to be knitted, it needs to be printed, embossed, I don't know, stencil, whatsoever. What do you need for a brand like that? Then you see our first draft on top, and this is how we came up with the logo. It took a while. It looks like the Univer bold condensed. You can try it, it's not. <laughs> Yeah, uh, interesting enough, it's uh, talking about the Remova logo, just a side story. Uh, a friend of mine called me, he said, I already have a suitcase bought in China, original Remova suitcase with your logo. And I knew we didn't even release the logo yet, and I knew the suitcase is going to come out like in August, and he called me in March. That's how fast the Chinese are. <laughs> it's maybe the same with that logo now. So, but fast but interesting because talking about these logos makes it very dull just talking about how you reduce something because I think it's not in, in the time of Instagram, social media, things have to be fast, things have to be a little bit more simple in all the different varieties you're using them. It's not that easy just saying like, oh, that's very simple, I can do that on my laptop at home. Because that's actually not our challenge anymore. Our challenge as graphic designers is the usage. Because we have to think about how we're going to use it later. Even if it's as simple as that. And I told you the way was not that simple. But it looks quite simple. When I, uh, I show it to my mom, my mom says, I got that typeface on my computer, Arial. <laughs> Bold. I squeeze it a bit. Here we go. Original Balenciaga logo. But it's... It's about the usage and the way you work together with the designer, how it's going to be used later on. And I think for Balenciaga or for Remova, it's a big step because the logo before it was very stretched and very long. And social media and 
I mean, like uh, uh, all your handheld devices are vertical. Nothing is horizontal. But if you see people running around like that, they're 200 years old. <laughs> if you have a website, you have to flip like that. You know, the guy coded it like 20 years ago. So everything is horizontal because you want to, you want to, and then you want to swipe. Yeah. So even the thing for the feed looks quite neat, and and it's a big part of the brand, anyways. Like also on the fashion, and um, yeah, yeah, coming to the most beautiful things. <laughs> Yeah, that's the new Balenciaga logo. <laughs> and uh, something else we did for Balenciaga, which was interesting as well, is uh, Demna asked us to do a new e-commerce website for them because they plan to shut down a few flagship stores because it just costs too much. And a big problem for big brands is the sale. So once you go into sale, it's a big problem. And another thing they had with the old website, you also had a shop on it, but the shop itself was like a retail shop, so they had to buy their own clothes. Once it was sold out there, but maybe it was still available in Tokyo, nobody knew about it. So the first thing we did, telling them so we can somehow adjust that, that they don't buy any things anymore. They're just like a platform, and you're directly ordering from all the destinations where uh, the clothes, the bags, or everything is available still. So you avoid a big kind of sale, so there's not a lot of stock somewhere. Because, you know, taste in every country is different, and you have like a pink bag, which goes uh, in Minnesota, maybe really bad, goes in LA pretty well. And, you know, that's the difference. Now they don't have that problem anymore. And if, what we told them is the same. Do, not, do a website which is very simple, which works like a TV switch, no pictures on it, no lookbook, nothing. You just decide, because most of the people who spend 5,000 euros for a bag, they already know what they're going to buy. It is that way. Because if you have 5,000 bucks to spend for a bag, you know it. <laughs> or you don't know it and you buy three. <laughs> but, so we thought, okay, maybe you decide first, women or men, that's easy. Then what do I want? It's like bags, shirts, tops. Go through that, and then you're already here. Third click. Fourth click, you're already in the shop. Fifth click, you're out, and the client is happy. <laughs> Which is good, because you know all these e-commerce shops you're on, and then you have to fill in this, this, and that. And here, it actually went pretty easy. Um, just showing you that we are not only doing this Arial kind of logos. <laughs> We have a client from uh, uh, Luxembourg uh, who asked us, actually quite a friend of mine, but he asked me like, because he had this idea of, of having this media lab kind of studio and uh, doing this in Luxembourg and if he could do the corporate identity for him and then he came up with the name and the name was simple like that. It doesn't really fit in because, you know, I'm German, I try to have the same type size on every slide. It's still the same type size of Mirko. Almost fit in. <laughs> so I was really laughing because whoever, Lemon Land Media Lab, I mean, what kind of name is that? So I came up with the idea of doing a monogram with two L's and a lemon on top of it, doing a logo, which is really long. And then on everything, every collateral on the backhand side, there's kind of this weird illustration. <laughs> we have tons of them. We have tons because it was really, we've been working on that job. It was the first time I was telling him that we need like 50 different types of letterheads. The front is always the same, but the backside is so different. And we had so much fun doing it because it's so stupid. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, welcome to America. This is a client we do here in America. Um, so we worked with uh, Nike Portland. We worked quite a lot with these guys. And uh, 
in that case, we did the corporate identity for New York or the coding for New York. And this is just the beginning of everything. We do uh, uh, installations for them and uh, all other weird things. But uh, mainly, we help them or we, we start, because we are a very small team, and they have big agencies. They have a big agency in Portland. They have White and Kennedy working with them for ages already. But sometimes, they ask us for having like a look for a campaign. So uh, they call us, or uh, actually never call us, they just write us an email with a very cryptic kind of <laughs> briefing. And uh, <laughs> thanks of the time delay, it always comes around three o'clock in the morning. So when I'm on the loose somewhere and checking my emails, there's a briefing coming in. And it says like, uh, we need, in the evening we need the feedback, so we need the first layout, the first draft. Um, it's interesting because it's one of these jobs you have to be done in two days. So all you're going to see, like all these campaigns, everything you're going to see now is like all done in two days, all very fast. And it's just parts of it because every layout you see in here is like maybe 300 layouts behind it because the thing is, when you don't really get feedback from a client because you don't have time, you just have, you know, just send shitload of stuff. <laughs> Let him decide. Give it out of hand. Yeah. Literally, like, it's PDFs which have, like, 200 megabytes. And there's no movie included or anything else. It's all Loras. Yeah. Equality campaign, so and then just showing with the equality campaign how, how it turns out. So we give them kind of a, a graphic system. This was about equality in sports and like trying to connect all different kind of sports together, finding a graphic language, how you can uh, imply it on social media, uh, movies, uh, advertising, billboards, whatsoever. And uh, what we did is trying to find a system that you have like all indicators of sports with the lines which always fit together in the posters and then you had the same uh, photography treatment on every picture. And this is how it turns out because we're not doing that anymore. We just bring the files and then the agencies, they run the business in the end and they spread it all over. But it's really fun uh, seeing it in the end because I've never been to these places. If you know something of it, just you know, tell me. <laughs> yeah. Another uh, interesting client, because this is one, another German client we have. Very settled, down-to-earth opera. Uh, classic music, you know, like people running around uh, in costumes and singing very old stuff. Uh, basically, in every piece, there's love, death, love, death, hate. Love has so it's almost like the same things happening in there, and we 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 are quite lucky because the Bavarian States Opera really is one of the best operas in the world. It is an amazing place. It's really huge. You have one of the best. I mean, loads of the best uh, opera singers in there. You have one of the best uh, orchestras. Ah, sorry, I'm German, so I always have to find my words. It's a hard one, though. Orchestra, do it again, um, in the world. And uh, it's a really high-end, top-quality thing. And we are lucky because the, the, the director of that place, he really trusts us because he has the same thing. It's always, because there's so many tourists in Munich. Munich is a tourist place. And uh, there's so many tourists in there, and everybody wants to go on the opera. So it's always sold out. So you won't get a ticket anyway. So the ticket is around 300, 350 bucks. So it's not that cheap. They're cheaper ones, but you have to be a Munich a student and then you have to stand in the last row. None of you maybe <laughs> might go there. <laughs> Students maybe, but not German and standing, I don't know. But yeah, and, and the things like, uh, um, when, we, when we started 10 years ago working with him, he said, I want no art, nothing special. It has to be very settled, down to earth. And I told him, we are going to do exactly that and that's what we did and I still think we do and uh, yeah this is uh, the last this is kind of the last look and feel of the last season 
I just show, uh, showed two slides because it's 90s techno uh, appeal. But normally we work together with artists, so we do the uh, illustrations ourselves, and then we try to find for every singer, how you say, season, a different look and feel. We, you see in the, in the top, this is the actual logo set in the Scotch, modern display. We use that typeface quite a lot, but we change it also when we think it's not be needed because something else is stronger in the way we treat the graphics. We also uh, work on the house all the time, so the house is going to be disguised or we discover it, uh, uh, disguise it somehow. Uh, in that case, which is nice, it's like all the white things in this. You know this 3M reflector fall you have on your Nike uh, shoes? It's the whole columns. So everybody, because this is the place is uh, photographed the most, and uh, you just need an LED light, an LED flash, uh, also during the day. And then you just see the columns. And the columns, they're quite striking because they're part of our logo as well. And we thought people are going to take pictures of that because it looks like lollipops somehow. But every time they try to take a picture, even from their wife standing in front of it, it's a black cutout and some white columns in the back. Yeah, this is for the ring anniversary. Oh, it's quite nice because the, we have these columns where we have all these posters on cultural things which stand in the city, not billboards. And these posters have been around like a ring around a finger. Yeah, and I'm going to show you something now which nobody saw beforehand because this is uh, the next season. The, just the Oprah people know it. And uh, yeah, we found... I had that idea of working uh, with a guy together called Scorpion Dagger. And uh, after that techno thing you saw before, like this very flashy, colorful, the director asked me, because it's his last year, and he said, Mirko, can you do something very decent and very classic? Just, you know, <laughs> I want to go in class out of that city because it's a very baroque, antique city. He said, no worries, we're going to do that. So that's what we did. Yeah, the nice thing is it's classic, <laughs> and the good thing is he's not going to see what you just saw because you can just see it with a mobile device. If you have like a mobile device, you have to download a special app from the Opera, and you just hold your uh, 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 your uh, mobile to that. This movie is running, like all the posters, everything, even in the house, like in the whole house of the building. There are a lot of paintings in there, which just go crazy when you go around with your handy. With, with your mobile, then something weird happens. Just show you maybe uh, another example. This is se uh, Seven Deaths of uh, Maria Callas. Very classic, of course. Somebody saw that piece already, Castor Pollux? Ah, oh, you should watch it because...
And now the last one, Snow Queen. Yeah. And I think he's happy. Actually, I had a really nice, uh, very long email. Uh, he was happy, but I think he's not really using his handheld yet. Uh, this is another guy, he's a friend of mine. He, he came back to me 10 years ago also, because uh, I always say 10 years, because our studio is like 10 years old. And some of the clients I'm showing now, because I think there's, there's a point when people ask you which are the clients you like the most, or which are the uh, clients which are the most challenging for you. And I think the clients which are the most challenging are the, the ones you have the longest, because it's really hard like, to find every year something new, and every time the muse to s stay back and then go the fight again and you know, try to find something better and something which is uh, encouraging again, or like, like f you find something which you really like in that work. So I'm doing that for 10 years, and he asked me, because he has this free... Uh, newspaper in Munich, which is about parties and exhibitions, galleries and stuff like that. And he finances himself about the ads which are inside. His problem was because at that time we had like 10 of these in Munich, so he wanted to have something special. And also the other problem was that most of the Munich people don't spend money for that because you have Instagram and everything else where you're going to see a party or Facebook or whatsoever. So he needed to have something outstanding to find clients also from abroad or from other areas. So it, he asked me because he knew I'm doing this, um, I'm doing very settled graphics uh, also for the Zeit and maybe I do a very settled kind of newspaper. And I was reading the first text he was showing me and they were so bad. They were so bad and I was really frustrated because I hoped for him that we do something special with it. And um, so the first thing I tried to find kind of a logo, and I was thinking, what could be an appropriate logo for a newspaper? And I was researching a lot. And actually, after a while, I thought, this is a really good picture because everybody knows that related to a newspaper. Then I was researching, is there a logo existing which is like that? Ridiculously not. It's not. So we had one. <laughs> it's this guy now. And uh, this guy is always somewhere in, the, in that, that newspaper. And, and the other thing I wanted to have, because I wanted to have like this strong kind of 50s advertising. You know, you know in the 50s you always had like a guy, uh, 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 I don't know, you had lo loads of them. If I tell you mine, you wouldn't know them. But you know, there's always like a comic figure or whatsoever next to a product. That was him. And I like that idea doing branding like in the 50s because I think uh, it was a good time and this world was still intact. <laughs> I don't know, no, but I really liked it. Uh, so this guy is always on the newspaper and um, he's always part of the newspaper. Well, the newspaper changed because the text didn't get really better because I thought maybe after like a few issues, we really tried hard on the design and it didn't really get better with the text. So somehow I decided to go a little bit more crazy with everything and, and thought maybe I deconstruct everything and, and just encourage, you know, the guys, the editors and everyone to do something also daring. And then I started like doing this kind of design a couple of years ago already. And this is the inside, very legit, of course. And uh, still no complaints. And it's different, it's like every issue is different. So sometimes it's very colorful, sometimes it's very like that. Not that legit. And for him, actually it's a good, good deal. And it's, it, 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 he was fighting with me a lot because uh, once I started doing all these weird th uh, things, he was like, oh, he thinks it's really ugly. And it is definitely really ugly. All of it, what I was just showing you, is not really beautiful. And uh, I know how 
to do beautiful. But it really doesn't make sense for him doing that because for him, it was the biggest chance being outstanding with a very ugly and bold product. And now he's well known, actually. Like, you see him everywhere. I mean, like, even from Japan, there are people ordering that magazine or that newspaper, and nobody really understands what's in there. But they're like, <laughs> good they don't, that they don't understand it. But yeah. And we have a nice readership. And that's what normally happens to that newspaper, anyways, because nobody's reading it. He's just using it when he refurbishes everything. Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is, the, uh, I didn't say anything about the studio. This is part of my studio. Uh, we are five fixed designers in the studio. We have uh, five interns in the moment. We have Constanze, who is doing everything for us around that business and helping us staying creative, uh, which is really important. That's the team, that's us. And um, yeah, uh, what I'm going to show you now is um, just because I've definitely forgot a lot of stuff. Because, but I'm going to show you now something else, and after that, the Q&A would be good, because it's almost eight. It's so Hi, German, boys. huh? This, this is, is it, it. Over, over the, the hill. hill. <laughs> Warm 
Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming again. That was it. I have to tell a joke now. Uh, yeah, I could tell one in German. It was just German music before, so... Did you like the music? Yeah, it's uh, mostly old uh, 80s punk songs. You like the text as well? But we can have the Q&A like that. I mean, if you're loud enough, I can. 
I'm loud enough. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? I'm just so ready. <laughs> oh, my first question is about the music. What was the first song? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> ah, but the first one was not, I was not, it was English, wasn't it? It was John Lennon. The first one was not German at all. Um, oh, hi. Hi. I liked your presentation. Thank I, you. I have a comment and a question. Uh, the comment is, it's really refreshing to see a generalist designer. I mean, you are applying creativity to any challenge that comes along, and it's really, I, I find it really refreshing. It was wonderful. And the question is, uh, did Super Paper make it? Yeah, yeah, still exists, yeah. Uh, it is. We're now in the 12th year. Uh, issue 128. Uh, I have to, because we're designing it on one day, actually on half a day. It doesn't look like it. I know it looks like hell of a work. <laughs> but after Cory Archangel, I knew the buttons. No, no, yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, one and a half day, yeah, maybe it's a half a day I'm, I'm working on it. But yeah, it still exists. It's doing okay -ish. I mean, it's a free product. And, and the guy has three kids, you know. I mean, he has to get a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah I, I, I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> so... It looked like a lot of your work varied between um, extremely modern, simple design and really, really crazy stuff that I don't even have words to describe. I'm kind of wondering how you decide going into a project, um, the route to take, and you know, do you kind of let your, you know, your clients obviously know your work, but do you kind of make that decision, or are they heavily involved in that, and how does that go about? For me, it's like. It's very important because in the end, it's a, it's a service job, you know. The thing we are working on is a service job. It's not, we're not artists. None of, I mean, you can maybe describe yourself as an artist. I'm not, I'm more describing myself, not even as fine as in the video we, we saw in the beginning. But uh, what I'm doing always, because I don't really like start designing uh, in the beginning. I, I used to work eight years for several advertising agencies and we always got these briefings. The creative director came back to us and then we worked on these briefings for two or three weeks. Then we had like this full presentation, went to the client and he saw it the first time and basically to 80% he was sitting there like, honestly, I hate it. I really hate it. I mean, like, just redo it. Just, or do you have, like, how many proposals do you have? Like, do you have at least 10 or 15 <laughs> or 20? I mean, because this is really crap. <laughs> and, um, and that's a really big problem in our, in, 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 in our job, I think, is, like, once you start working on something, you really fall in love. Once you have a good idea and you, you walk that road down and then you think, like, okay, everybody's getting it. Everybody's getting it. It's so obvious, I'm going to get there, he's going to see it, and he goes like, you're going to be my best friend from that day, I'm going to pay you a gazillion dollars, and bye-bye. Uh, so, but it's never working out like this. The way we process working now is, uh, once somebody asks us to work with him, we talk to them very, very long. Like, and then, mostly we try to get hold on them for at least one or two days for a workshop. So we make workshop days after having a lot, a lot of conversations. Then we start developing some things, like some routes, some ideas. But it's basically around architecture, art, structure, materials, um, some kind of typeface treatment, things we did before, and we, we, we just stick a full wall uh, uh, of stuff on it, and then we roughly start designing different routes for the for for the client. But it's really rough. It's really like very badly designed. Just the ideas, uh, just as a sketch, and then you already see when people come in. When the point is that they start liking something, sometimes it's just you know this post-it hanging somewhere, and he goes like, "Oh, that's cool," and then you know at least oh he likes yellow, you know. <laughs> so yellow is set. 
and he likes sticky stuff as well. So he likes yellow sticky stuff. And, uh, and that's the way we try to figure out how, how the client works because the way I'm not, I mean, like, you see, it's quite diverse what we're doing, but I think it still is kind of the same narrative. And I think the narrative is the most important because I always tell my designers, I mean, don't, you know, don't stick to fucking yellow because the client likes yellow. Maybe the yellow is not the color we're going to use in the end, but just use yellow now. And um, because the worst thing which can happen, you're just totally into your idea. You got stuck. The client says, okay, then if you really want to do that because you're fighting for that idea so hard and then he's changing this and this and that and it goes over weeks sometimes, like two weeks and he's changing little bits and in the end you don't see it anymore but your idea is just gone. It's just yellow and sticky. <laughs> you know, but the rest of the ideas is just gone and uh, I think that's really good to have a really long and very diverse conversation with your client and even that you decide in the end that you're not working together with him. Because you hear you always like, but my, my wife, she's, she actually likes yellow now, but I like yellow. You know, it's, uh, it's tricky. It's tricky, but uh, for us, it's the only way to, because some of the work, as you said, you can't describe it. I can't hardly describe it as well. And it's like, it's not really easy to, that's maybe why we do every super paper, for example, uh, different, because I don't know how to do it again. It is that way, um, but it has a certain feeling on it, and I think that's the most important. And that's the thing you have to keep in your designs, or I try to keep in my designs. Hi. Um, so Hi. I have a question just about the evolution of your process. I mean, I know there are some exceptions, like um, Zeit having something print, but I mean, almost nothing is print anymore. Can you talk a little bit about the a kind of evolution of your process going from more print to less and less and less? Does it Has it changed? Um, yeah. Vielen Dank. Großartig. Um, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, the things, I started in advertising, then um, in the end I really got fed up with uh, dealing just with clients all the time, and I, I didn't want to work that much anymore. I'm not a hard-working person. <laughs> That's how it is. Um, I have different interests as well, you know. And, uh, yeah, so uh, then I started doing uh, magazines and newspaper, which are in, in, in Germany, you have a fixed employee. You have uh, many rights. You just have to work between nine and six, and everything else after that, you can go... Uh, to your chef and you can complain and the complaint, the complaint must be heard and which is good you know so I started there and, and then I got quite famous in Germany doing newspapers and magazines and uh, I was just doing print and it changed it changed after a while then we started doing websites then we started doing music videos and a lot of animation things in Cinema 4D and a lot of video stuff and the art direction was always there anyways and what changed now for the last two or three years that we do a lot of branding because we never did branding before. We're not branding specialists. They're like big agencies which are really specialists on brandings. We do that also from our guts and from our feeling how, how, we, how we do brandings. And for that, we need uh, companies from Italy or France because they're the creative director who's doing the fashion or who's doing other de decisions, they can decide. There's not a marketing team sitting behind it who says, you can't do that. For example, when we, um, when we had the presentation for the Balenciaga website, we had three different drafts with us. We shot the first one, which, which was like a decent, very normal kind of fashion website. It looked more modern. It was a bit freaky, but nothing. Then we showed that one, which we just saw, and which is super rigid and... It's like an uh, Excel tableau in the end. That was also my idea. I was sitting in Milan in the taxi, reading the briefing again. I was like, okay, in the end, it's an Excel sheet. It's the areal and some lines and the grid. And then we had a third one. And when we had the presentation, there was the full marketing, CEO of Caring, of Balenciaga. Everybody was sitting there. And after the second presentation, Demna said, this is the head designer of Balenciaga. He said, okay, that's it. This is the one we are going to take. And he left. 
and everybody else was in there and said, yeah, no, but uh, I mean, they have three, you know, <laughs> there's a third one, maybe it's better. And he said, no, I don't want to see it. The second one is the good one. And I have to do my work again. And we're going to take this and that set. And yeah, actually, even the CEO wanted to see it, but I was not allowed to show it anymore. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, uh, that's uh, something which you don't see that often anymore. And, and I think that's something. But now, you know, he's right, because now 78% of the whole stuff they're selling, they're selling over, over that e-commerce website worldwide, which is big for the massive. They didn't sell anything about that website before. So he had the right feeling for it, and he didn't need a big marketing team and so, so many people, so nobody understands it. You need some heritage, because first thing, of course, from the marketing was, where's all the heritage? Where's all, you know, we come from Spain. Now we're in Paris. I said, yeah, don't fuck that. Now I'm from uh, 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 Georgia, and I'm sitting here, and I'm doing the design, so there's no heritage. So, yeah. Does it, did it help you? Sorry, I sometimes start somewhere and then <laughs> you just have to point something when I go in the wrong direction. Just Yeah, hello. I think a lot of design is mired in rules and regulations and, and principles of design. How do you feel about the rules and principles of design? Oh, I think they're uh, very, imp in the end, don't laugh now, very important. And uh, I always have rules for a few months. <laughs> and I'm really behind these rules. You saw that uh, I really am. I'm super strict on them. You can ask my team. It's like, uh, you saw that Spike magazine before? Uh, we, we used in that the cable. The cable, I ignored that typeface for ages. I used it the last time, I think, by accident uh, during my, my university time. But I really hated it after that. And when we did that magazine, it was because uh, the chief editor, she wanted to have something very classic, but then recognizable and f something very own with the antique feeling, but on the other hand, super modern. And I was sitting there, and at one point, there was, you know, you're just sitting in front of all these typefaces. I was like, okay, I mean, I just try the cable now. Because there's, you know, no other way out. And the user was like, oh, fuck, it's so ugly. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's the typeface we're using now. And, and the designer was working on that thing. She came around, she was looking at it. She was like, it's, honestly, no way. You're not going to use that typeface. And I, yeah, I have rules, very strict ones, and I'm not doing them. But I'm sometimes really surprised by myself when I, when I do something else. And I think that's important to stay, just stay open. I think because otherwise, if you don't have rules, if you don't have a grid, if you don't have a way to follow, it's just endless. It's uh, 10 million typefaces you can use, all different kind of papers, and uh, even worse with uh, tablets, web, whatever. It's like it's an endless way you can go. Uh, which hover, which uh, 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 pixel size, how to, you know, navigate through a website, navigation top, navigation down, navigation left hand side. And um, yeah, I think you have to be very strict on your rules and then break them. I'm not supposed to say anything, but there are a few people. Okay, I have one more question. Um, kind of building off of that. I'm back here, hey. <laughs> um, so you had mentioned, I'm back here. Ah. <laughs> um, just building off of your own cultural rules and the rules that you've set for yourself in the Western civilization, how do you make sure, especially with your Eastern clients and your Chinese issues, how do you make sure that your design lands within cultural norms and what's going to be accepted within different... We work with uh, Asian uh, graphic designers. Okay. <laughs> Easy like that. <laughs> we call it freelancing. No, it's the only way, like, uh, how we can do that. Obviously, I don't, I don't understand anything. Um, first time they asked me, I was just laughing. I was like, no. <laughs> so what we did, we, we just do the grid, and we do, like, kind of the design, the all-over design of everything, and then we give it to our uh, uh, Chinese designers. It's like, it's a team of two. 
and then they set everything, then they send us the PDF, and then we go like, <laughs> we can, I mean, we can just judge by how it looks, but we know the content and everything because we get the texts beforehand in English. So that's right, but if somebody writes something else inside, I don't know. Hello. Um, so looking at your Balenciaga website in particular, my first, um, I guess, introduction to that design was when one of my graphic designer friends showed it to me. And I, w I had a very mixed feeling about it. Like I couldn't decide whether I like it or really hate it. But I am a um, web developer also and gra graphic designer. And I showed it to a lot of like web developer friends and graphic design friends. And they also had a either I love it or I hate it reaction. But um, I was wondering if you have any process for like user testing or how you go about seeing what the general public thinks about it, about your designs. The, no, 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 we don't do that. We don't have a marketing. <laughs> it doesn't, I mean, we wouldn't come that far if we would have that. Um, but with Balenciaga, we worked with Ux together in, in Milan. So they're like professionals. They do uh, Mr. Potter and, and some other websites, which are really good. And obviously, we. I mean, it was the first big e-commerce website we ever did, so we didn't know a lot about the checkout process and how to like deal with all that. Um, so we took like freelancers again, <laughs> but this was a big agency, much bigger than us, because they've been professionals, and we just showed them the idea we had with the design and then tried to make it work, and they had the experience with the checkout process. They said also like the landing page and everything like that is maybe too simple and wouldn't work, but uh, Balenciaga, they, they told us they want to have like mobile first anyways, and we thought, okay, we have this thing where you just decide very fast. And regarding the loading times, it's easy, you know, like until you're on the product, it's like <laughs> as fast as it can get, and, and I think that's in the end, it's the, a lot of people uh, didn't like the website, I'm still not really keen if I like the design of the website, but I think it, it works. <laughs> and uh, yeah, maybe I would have done it a little bit different, but I, we, we, I just tried to find out the simplest way from A to B, and that's it. A to Z. I mean, you don't have to stay if you don't feel like it. Hello. Um, right here. Background, so I'm uh, thinking about studying design, either staying here or going abroad, specifically Germany. So my question for you is, what do you think the two, um, I guess, what is the difference between the design cultures right now that the both continents have? Woof. That's not easy, because uh, in times of Instagram, a lot of things mixed up, so there's not if you see the younger generations, a lot of stuff looks and feels the same, almost the same. And uh, they, uh, you, sometimes you have the feeling it's just, you know, it's just about looking anymore, not about an idea or something like cultural background or, and you know, like most of it you see which you really like, also I like, doesn't have a real client behind it or a real like reason why it is that way. But yeah, um, there's still, uh, different possibilities in working. I mean, like if you uh, come to Germany, Germany is very small, and uh, we don't have that many good design agencies, but still, it's a lot. I mean, if you would compare it to America, uh, if you see the full stretch of the country, it would maybe be comparable. Uh, and then it would, might feel dense for you, if you would be there. And um, I think it's always good seeing something else. It's always good because it's, it's so different. My wife, she's American, and every year we come to America, and uh, you know, I'm this guy from that small city in Munich, and for me it's like so overwhelming because I knew, of course, as, as in European and working-wise, I knew Miami, LA, San Francisco, New York, the places where you're gonna go for a photo shoot or because of your clients. And uh, now I'm in Minnesota, you know? I'm in Minneapolis, I'm living in St. Paul, 
And uh, I see so many different aspects of the United States now. And, and before, and I had like one very stereotype about that country, which is so big, which is stupid, because I know you have the same seeing Europe, but as a small European, having that for such a big country is really weird. And uh, it opened up a lot, I think. And I, I, th I think the most important for design anyways is not looking on your Instagram or seeing work from different people. It's like, uh, because it's a communication kind of job, is communicating with people all over the world and seeing like how they communicate and understand how they communicate. Because we're talking like kind of a weird language. It's a language with Helvetica and, you know, sabon and pictures and colors, but it's also a language. And uh, it's good speaking that in, in different ways. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so you talked about with Nike, for example, you only have two days to work on something. I'm just curious, how do you deal with time constraints like that and still deliver your best work? Uh, that's uh, it's a good question because s sometimes people ask us because every each of our days, I'm working them on at least at, on, on 12 different projects at the same time. And... Uh, each of my designers maybe have four or five different projects as well, like they're like because they help each other. Sometimes they're bigger, and uh, and then people always ask how you manage that. And I, it's really hard to describe. But I think creativity is not only a thing which comes to you when you're outside in the open and look at the sea. It's work, you know, and it should be work as well. It should be uh, something. Where you say, oh, I'm not creative today. I don't feel creative today. It was really like the plumber comes for uh, comes at your place, looks at the toilet, and says, "Not today." <laughs> Yesterday I could have done it, but today, <laughs> try it tomorrow. You know what I mean? And and I think once you get over that point, it's much easier. It's much easier once you accept it's just work and it's a place where you work and it's not, you don't have to be, you know, it's not rocket science every day. We, we're not uh, uh, doing operations on open hearts. It's not, you know, we're not helping anyone. <laughs> My mom still doesn't know what I'm doing. <laughs> she thinks I'm drawing in some place, kind of Bob Rosta. But, <laughs> Once you're over that point, I think we shouldn't take ourselves too serious because it's a really nice profession and it's a really nice job, but it's not, I mean, actually nobody cares about it. <laughs> it is that way. I mean, it starts that people get more and more uh, into graphic design, but, but then when you see what they really like, you might hate it. That's, that's it. And, uh, and I think from that point on, it's really easy to work with it. Because I always say, OK, uh, two decisions, Helvetica or Times, <laughs> horizontal or vertical, two decisions made, <laughs> in the game. <laughs> <sighs> you know? And then it can just get better from that point. <laughs> Every decision from that point is already a decision. Yeah. You don't, don't like the times? <laughs> That's what I, what I thought. Hi, Miracle. Hi. <laughs> uh, you showed in some of your examples, especially the uh, logo redesigns, yeah. you, you really looked into the past, brand archaeology, and respected that. Do you always do that when you're looking at historical brands? Do you always look at the past and respect it? Or do you say, you know what? The past ain't so great. Let's throw it out and start anew. N we always look into the past, always, and we always try to find something good in there. When the past is really bad, we just say, okay, we looked into the past, just forget about it. <laughs> Which is also good, but then we already, I mean, then you have a good feeling with yourself and said, okay, I did a research. I think, like, because a lot of designers just go, they, their research is like going on, like, what they collected and what they like and which direction it could go, but 
just heading from one point where they want to lead. And um, I think a good research starts with the company, starts deeply in the DNA of a company. You have to go really right, right go in there and understand that brand. Because you're talking in the end to a lot of marketing specialists and whatever, who is a specialist in the company now. And you, you need some reasons to tell them why it's the accidents grotesque now. You know what I mean? Because it could be the Arial as well, because he wouldn't see the difference. He wouldn't see any difference, but what the only thing they need is some reason to tell their clients why they change everything. With Remova, was, uh, we had quite a nice move because we, uh, uh, that logo you saw, which is actually the new logo, but we call it the Jubilee logo because they had a really big Jubilee. They, they've been uh, 75 years old. Is it 75? No, 175 years old, which is not a Jubilee, you know. It's not even worth a party. But, uh, and then we said, okay, this is, and then the suitcases are Jubilee suitcases because they still had 30,000 suitcases uh, somewhere in the storage. So we tried to make it slowly. But still, that logo has a heritage now, as you saw, and it has an idea behind it. But we always try to make that. Uh, also with the tides, when I came there 10 years ago, they, uh, I'm doing like the whole publisher house. They had like 15 magazines, a newspaper, two different websites, and a corporate publishing house. And actually I'm the creative director of the whole thing. And when I came there, first thing I did, because everything looked different, everything. So I went back to the past and uh, looked what was there. And there was a typeface called Timan, which, which was... This special cut was just done for the Zeit. Looks a little bit antiques, the typeface you saw in all the slides. And I said, okay, this is the typeface everybody has to use from now on. That's it. And the logos, fuck the logos, everything has to look as the typeface from the Zeit. So, because asking about grids and things like these, just to have a starting point again, you know, because you can't start from scratch. You can't say, okay, we have empty pages, is it horizontal or vertical times or Helvetica? So it needs to be a different scratch. In that case, it was just a stretch to set everything right to a point where everything was still actually beautiful and nice. And then I told the art directors to move on again. Did it explain what I mean? What it did? OK, thank you. Looking good. <laughs> Everybody's thirsty, huh? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs>